Hey everyone, I'm Nick Berlin with Berlin Builds. Today I want to talk to you about this awesome saw. This is the DWS 779. It's DeWalt's 12 inch sliding miter saw. It's the cheaper version as opposed to the 780, which comes with a light and a few extra features. But today we're going to be talking specifically about this saw. My trade is finished carpentry and woodworking. You can look at some of my other videos and you can see some of the finished carpentry work that I've done. I went out as a finished carpenter on my own in February of last year. So it's been about a year and a half that I've been running my own business. And this is the saw that I've used exclusively during that time. I guess not just exclusively this saw. I mean, there's a bunch of circular saws and other you know, oscillating saws and stuff, but I do have a secondary saw, which is the exact same one. It's also a DWS 779, which shows you how much I like it already going into the video because I have two of them. Overall, I really like this saw. It's well put together. It just feels good as you're using it. It doesn't shift around. It just stays where it's supposed to be. The slide on it is nice. It's you have to use some strength for it, but not it's not a workout to use. But I feel that gives you more control because if it just slid really fast whenever you touched it, it would be a little bit harder to handle and just maintain. The, uh, the build quality on this feels really nice. There are a few components that are plastic that I wish were metal, such as this little handle down here. That'd be nice to have that be metal just because I like metal. Um, all of this is plastic housing, which actually cuts down on the weight of the saw by itself weighs about 50 pounds. So it's kind of a heavy saw. I'm, it's a little shy of 50 if I remember right, but if they didn't use these plastic components, I'm sure it'd be heavier. And as a trim carpenter that blows us in and out of my trailer, I can see that the plastic is kind of a good thing just to reduce in weight. Out of the box, the saw comes with this fence, which you can slide out of the way, so that way you can lay down the saw to do your different miters. Um, mine is custom, it's missing this little piece, which I actually have right here. Um, one of my employees, he forgot to slide it over. He felt really bad, not a big deal. These are actually aluminum, so it didn't hurt the blade at all. But things like that happen. So mine is custom now. If you're curious, I just wanna point that out in case you're curious. But it's really easy to slide these. There's these two little wing nuts on the back and you just loosen them and you can tighten them. So you can slide that out of the way. This saw does come with some positive detents. So right at zero degrees, you have a positive detent. So you can slide and it'll stop right there. It also has one at 15, 22 and a half. 31.6 and 45. Now, on the left hand side, the saw can go up to a 50 degree cut. And on the right side, you can go up to 60, which is really nice. Right here, this is the detent override. So if you want, you can actually just kind of lift up on that. It'll make it so that you slide past the detents. I almost never use that. I just hold this button. And that's also a detent override. So I mean, maybe someone else in the comments can explain the real feature of this. I haven't seen much point in it but that's where that's at. And then if you ever wanna do, like let's say you wanna do a 20 degree angle cut, all you have to do is line it up where you want it and then you clamp it down right here and it stays. Like it does not wanna move, so it stays really accurate for you. For laying the saw down, I feel like this is a little awkward. It's not the end of the world, but you have a black knob on the back and all you do is you loosen that and then you can drop the saw off to the left. Now if you wanna drop it to the right, there's a little yellow knob on the back. All you do is you twist that and now you can drop it this way as well. It does have a positive stop right at zero degrees, which you have to make sure that knob's in the correct position, or otherwise you'll skip past it. But you can see it'll stop that way. It doesn't come to a stop going the opposite direction, only this direction will come to a positive stop. Just to show you real quick, this is the backside of my secondary saw. That's the handle that clamps it in position and, or releases it so that you can you know, drop the saw down. And then that's the little override that makes it so you can tip it off to the right. I've been very impressed at how accurate and true the saw stays, especially with me dragging it in and out and in and out and in and out of my trailer and up and down stairs. Most of the trim I do is in basements. So it gets jarred around a lot. Now, if you're ever, so let's say the saw ever gets out of square this way. Um, what I do is I just take a framing square and I lay it down and I lay it up against the blade. Then you have these four little spots right here. And all you do is you loosen the little bolts on each of those and then you can knock the saw back to where it needs to be to be square with your framing square and you just tighten those four back up and you're good to go. Now if your saw ever gets out of plumb where it's not a true you know, plumb cut coming straight down with a 90 degree cut, the adjustment for that is actually right here on this bolt. So I just use a digital, um, oh boy, what do you call it? A digital angle finder and that's magnetic so I can put it zeroed out on the bed and then I can stick it on the blade and you just do little micro adjustments with this bolt and it's so it's really easy to adjust. Also, if you're 45 
degree stops ever get out is actually this bolt right here it takes care of it going this direction. And then there's a bolt on this side right here, which takes care of the saw going like this. So very easy to adjust. Not that it gets out of square or true very often, but if it ever does, it's pretty easy to take care of. This is my secondary saw. I'm just showing you some of the stuff that's on the back side and something that I really don't care for on the saw. If you're just running trim jobs, it's not a big deal. But if you're wanting to set the saw up in your garage as a shop saw, what you have to deal with is how far out this thing sticks. So going from the back of the base plate to the very end of your dust collection port, you're about 14 and a half inches. Now, once you add dust collection onto this bad boy, you get closer to 20. So you really have to stick this thing off of the wall and just, it's not the best if you're wanting this to be a shop saw. I see this more as a job site saw. If you're taking this in and out. It doesn't matter if you're up tight against the wall. So that's something to consider in your purchase. For dust collection on this saw, I actually have one of DeWalt's vacuums that I have hooked up onto this thing and it works really good. Without it, there's a lot of dust, but with this, I think it cuts down, I'd say about 90% of the dust gets caught into the vacuum, closer to probably 95, but it takes care of a lot of the dust. Except on the actual saw itself, it seems to collect dust right here, but if you're working in someone's basement and you've got a vacuum on it, um, it's pretty minimal dust and it's pretty easy to clean up at the end of the day. Maintenance on this saw is really easy too. Changing out the blade usually takes me all of maybe four minutes. It's pretty ergonomic. There's a little button right here that locks the blade. It also comes with this handy tool for all of your adjustments and it has a storage clip right here. That way you don't ever have to lose it. But this takes care of the adjustments I was showing you for the saw tipping this way and it also takes care of if your saw ever gets out square this way and changing the blade. All of this one little tool. So handy little devil. Don't lose it. Make sure you always put it back in the clip. Overall, I've been super happy with this saw. I would recommend it to you if you're looking at doing trim jobs or if you're a DIYer that doesn't want your saw set up all the time in your garage, but you just want a good saw that's got a lot of power to it, this can be a really good option for you. It's, I bought these for $400 a year and a half ago. Well, one was a year and a half ago and one was about a year ago that I bought it. About $400 at Lowe's, they were on sale. Right now I'm seeing them going for about $500. They're about $200 cheaper than the 780. Now. Looking back on it, would I go with the 780? Maybe, this, the 780 has a light, and so it gives you a shadow line, which is pretty nice. I'm just so used to lining up with the blade, or sometimes I'll do like a blue tape zero clearance thing, which anyways, I, I don't need the light. So for me, spending an extra $200 for the light seemed like a hard a hard $200 to spend, especially when I have two of them, that's $400, which when the saws, the saws are on sale, I could buy a third saw if I felt like it at that same price. The saw does draw a lot of power, so make sure that you've got a good circuit that you're gonna put this on. I can always tell when I'm in a basement and there's too many things on the circuit because the saw, it will be hungry. It will be thirsty, if you know what I mean. It just doesn't have quite all the juice and it will trip the breaker, which is frustrating. So try and at least be on a 20 amp breaker circuit would be my recommendation here. When you've got the 20 amps and you don't have a million other things on the circuit, this thing has plenty of power and it can chew through whatever you want. Walnut, white oak, hardwood, I mean all hardwoods, right? But plywoods, two by fours in the breeze. And this thing with MDF, it just eats it for breakfast all day. So power issues, I never had any issues with that. You get quite a bit of sliding capacity on this. Let me measure that for you real fast. The max width of material that you can cut in a 90 degree position is just over 13 inches in width, which is pretty nice. And then for how deep of a material, or I guess how thick of a material that you can make a cut through, depending on how wide it is, you're gonna hit your nut right about five inches. So you can cut material that's five inches thick pretty easily. If you're a trim carpenter and you're looking for a good trim saw, I would really recommend these. They've been a really good value for me, especially having two. They have rattled around in my truck and there's there's this one job, there's a speed bump, and I don't know why, I could never remember that speed bump was there, and I always hit it hard. And these uh, these saws have survived that. I've come back into my trailer a few times to find them tipped over, and no, no issues. This uh, little rigid stand over here isn't my favorite, it's a little wobbly. Um, I, I, it might have happened where the saw has tipped over a couple times while it's getting rolled into or out of a job site. Maybe, I don't wanna confirm it. But if that did happen, it didn't affect the saw at all. By watching this video, you've probably earned me about maybe a penny, which is awesome. I'm not, I'm not mad about getting a penny. I'm all about pennies. I pick them up on the sidewalk. 
But if you wanna leave a tip down below, you can leave a tip with whatever amount you want. There's a, it can be like $2 is pretty common or four or five. All you, you'll see down below, there's a little thanks button and I think it's got a little heart around it. And if you click on that and you leave a comment, you can leave a tip that goes to me. YouTube does take out a little bit of that, unfortunately, but that's capitalism, right? So I get most of it though. So if you're wanting to leave me a tip, if this has been helpful, feel free to do so down below. And if you do, thanks very much. Thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you hit that like button if this was helpful to you and subscribe for more videos about finished carpentry, general contracting, and tools.